I have one very last question, one question that defies completely what we have talked about so far. <laughs> and this do. question is very, uh, it's like very vulgar, and it is, how do we make money with the human in the loop? What <laughs> If we can't create a new product, what that what that would be, and why would it uh, make money? I appreciate this conversation so much, Paolo, and I don't think it's a vulgar question, actually. If we do make money of, with it, I hope it is with a kind of a social conscience that we make anything with technology. And if we can't get that right, we should not make the thing, even if it's against our rational self-interest, even if it's against our rational business interest. We should not make the thing. You'd be surprised. People have have gone out of their way to help other people against a rational self-interest. I know it's not exactly in our nature to do that, but this is what human agency is actually about. The, dis the ability to, at least for all intents and purposes, make what we might call choices, right? Free will or no free will, we, we go through life for all intents and purposes as if we have free will. That's how we operate in life. Why should the products we make be any different? And just because it's easier and more expedient to, to act in our, always act in our rational self-interest doesn't mean we have to. We can choose to not do that. And in a way, like, that may feel bad in the short term, but maybe there's something valuable in it in the long term for ourselves and for all of us. You know, people would have said, good, that's so ide idealistic of you. I'm like, I'm, I don't care. I mean, I, I know I have to exist in this world. I know there are practical things. To, I mean, I have a, I'm have a gainfully employed. I was the co-founder of a venture-backed startup company. I'm not here to be anti-technology. I, I, I have a computer science degree. I'm not anti-technology. I'm not anti-business. I'm not anti-commerce. A tip to make money with the human in the loop. <laughs> so, I, so how do we make money with this? If you look at the actual products, uh, take a product like, you know, no, like, like uh, actually a, a creativity product, like Photoshop. Any movie editors, uh, music composers, like just take a automated, like a, like a music composition program for someone who's never done music, right? Uh, here's a human loop approach that is not like big red button, generate me a song. Here is something that's like, well, give me the next measure. Give me the next three seconds. And let me be able to be like, do I like that? And how can I change what's in front of me? And then be like, give me the next measure. And so, in a way, it's this ping-ponging between you and the system. And I, you can design products, I guarantee you, that really speak to a lot of people who just want, who has, has a song in their head, but doesn't really have, like, a, doesn't have necessarily the training or necessarily the courage or the confidence to do it. But the system can help them. But they are still in charge, right? Who's the composer? Is it the system? Is it the person? I would say it kind of doesn't matter but the human's gonna feel like they were in control. Same concept with um, with Photoshop, right? If the example from from Nick can actually do the source separation better, imagine what you can do with, with, with graphics processing, with video editing. Very interesting economic concept. I could call it the disintermediation of human creativity from training. Meaning we don't need to be educated and spend 10 years to become mu musicians, <laughs> to become actors, to become scientists, to start creating science, to start creating art, to start creating movies by, you know, letting, if you like, the AI doing the heavy lifting of the learning and using our brain to just create. I like it. I should say that I don't, I don't think that's the ultimate goal. I, I do think this is one application in terms of like, if I were to think of a product today that needs to make money, but also feel like I feel like it's socially potentially beneficial. I would try to make a tool that helps people be creative uh, by incorporating AI with human agency and human interaction built into the loop. But I I would also like to build tools that a someone who is very trained in music can use maybe the same tool and still find it interesting, find it useful, find it expressive. Two types approach. One is lowering the entry, and the other one is is, is raising the ceiling expanding uh, the capabilities of the profession. Exactly. I think both is worthwhile. So, uh, and both can, I mean, if we're talking in a strictly business sense, both can make for a good, good product. Talking engineering terms, you want to expand the dynamic range. <laughs> yes. Of human brains. <laughs> yes. Engineering and audio. Yes. I would like, I would love to expand the dynamic range. <laughs>